Hey guys, so this is part two using the new We Are Memory Keepers book binding tool and I decided to split this video into two because the Coptic binding method is pretty detailed and um, I, I didn't want the video to run super long if you were just looking for the basics and then vice versa if you're just looking for this type of binding you can easily come to this video when you need to re-reference it. So <clears throat> I've grabbed a piece of paper from I'm still using the Maggie Holmes Sunny Days collection and I pulled one out of the actual book so that I don't waste the opposite side of the page since I'm going to be gluing it down. So in order to do the Coptic method, and for those of you who don't know, the nice thing about this method, even though it is a little bit more work, is that when you open up the book, it will lay flat instead of you having to hold the spine or fold the spine. So um, it is it is detailed, but if you're making a journal or something that you're going to use for a couple months or maybe even for the year, you can make this as thick as you want. Um, and it's really nice to be able to lay flat if you're doing a sketchbook or something like that. So um, I wanted to share this method with you as well. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is create my covers. So I've got a piece of chipboard here. It's pretty thin. I save these whenever I get my scrapbook.com orders and that is what this one came from. It's going to work great as a cover. You can obviously, um, you could use wood, you could use really anything you want that's sturdy that's going to be a nice cover to your book. So I'm going to start out here by just adding some art glitter glue. I'm going to get fairly close to the edges here and I'm just going to go all the way around. And then because I'm going to be trimming this down, I am going to go ahead and just fill in to make sure that I've got some glue everywhere. Now I'm doing a very, very, very thin, thin, thin layer of glue. This is not globbed on at all. It's just enough to get everything attached. And then I'm going to take my paper and I'll line up my edges here. Get that as close as I can and get that placed down. Oh, I forgot it was a little bit longer. That's okay. I'm going to trim it anyways. I'm just going to smooth that out and then I will let that dry. While I'm doing that, I'm going to get my signature pages ready. So a signature page is, a signature is basically four pages of paper that are folded in the center and that makes one signature. So I'm going to use computer paper here. It's just the easiest for what I have, but like I said, you could make a sketchbook, so you could grab like sketchbook or watercolor or, you know, any kind of paper that you want to use. So I'm going to line this up as best as I can. Go ahead and fold that over. And then I'll crease that so that it's nice and sharp. And that'll be my first signature. And I'm going to do the same thing. I think I pulled out enough paper to make five signatures here. One, two, three, four. And you just want to be as careful as you can when you're lining everything up because the neater you are here when you make your creases, the nicer your book is going to be when it's finished. And the other nice thing about this type of book is that you don't have to worry because you're doing the pages and signatures. You don't have to worry about things, the inner pages coming out further than the outer pages um, because you're not doing too many at a time. So you don't have to worry about trimming or anything like that. It's just going to be the size that you fold it to. All right, so I've got my one two, three, four, five signatures. So these are four pages each. So when you fold it over, you're going to have eight. So eight times five, this will be a total of 40 pages um, that are going to go inside my book. And there you can see when you stack it, it's all nice and even. So I'm going to set those off to the side. So because this is eight and a half by 11 and I folded it in half, this is going to be five and a half. I'm just double checking my math. <laughs> five and a half by eight and a half. Yep. So I'm going to trim my covers down to five and a half by eight and a half. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my bottom edge is nice and straight because I'm not sure that my paper is completely perfect there. 
Um, and I'm gonna run this here, trim off a new bottom edge. And then from here, I'm going to do my eight and a half measurement. Make sure I've got that right. I think I'm out of frame. Pull that down a little for you. So I'm gonna do eight and a half here. And I'll just save that extra. I can make a little notepad or something um, and use that as a cover. And then I'm gonna do two five and a half pieces here. So, one five and a half, and two five and a half. Oh, my edge got a little crunched there. I'll trim that with my scissors. Okay. Okay. Is this one okay? Yeah, good enough. Okay, so we're actually going to use both sides of this in order to make our book. So the first thing I'm going to do is the cover. And I'm going to line this up along the two edges here. So there's sort of this little lip right here. I'm going to just take my finger and make sure this is lined up here. And then of course make sure that my edge is lined up here. And get my grid down. And then for this type of binding, you're not gonna do holes that are all the way down. You're just gonna do some binding that's gonna be on either edge. Again, making sure that's nice and tight. And I'm gonna grab my piercing tool. So I'm gonna do three holes from the top and three from the bottom. I'm just gonna space those out about an inch apart. So I'm gonna start here at the second one in. And then I'm gonna skip one and then I'm gonna go in the next one. And then I'm gonna skip one, and then I'm gonna go in the next one. So those are gonna be my three at the top. And then here, um, because I'm slightly shorter, I'm gonna start at the first one, the first one that does not have the black circle around it. So I'm gonna one, and then I'll skip one, and then I'll go two, and then I'll skip one, and then I'll go three. So there's my um, three holes on either side. These, the only complaint I have about this is these screws are a little bit hard to use. Like if you get them down, you want to get them down tight enough, <laughs> but then you also, um, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a bit difficult. Okay, so now this is my front cover, right? So you want the holes to match up perfectly. So you don't want to just stick this one in like this because they may not be exactly positioned. It might not be exactly the same size from here to here and from here to here. Um, so what you're gonna do is flip it over like this so that you've got your front and your back cover. And then I'm actually gonna pierce this one this way. So again, I'm gonna line it up and make sure that's nice and flush. And then get my guide down here. Again, making sure that's nice and flush. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So on this top one, I started with the first circled hole. So I'm gonna go one, skip one, two, skip one, three. And then this one, I started with the first uncircled hole. So I'm gonna go one, skip one, two, skip one, three. And that way, they're gonna measure, match up perfectly. Again, it's really sometimes difficult to get those screws undone. So now I've got my front and my back covers. I'm just gonna grab my needle here. So you can see that because of the way the grids work, they are perfectly lined up. And same thing at the bottom. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna sit these off to the side. And now we're gonna work on the signature pages. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky with this tool because this top part here is not the same as this top part here. This one's up just slightly higher. I'm not sure why they did that. I'm sure there was a reason for it. But you wanna be careful when you line up your signature pages because you want your holes to match perfectly. And we're not gonna be lining them up this way. We're gonna be lining them up 
with the v-folds. I know that's kind of confusing um, when you think about the last one that we just did, but just trust me, this is this is how it works. So I'm going to take this v-fold, I'm going to get that in the dip, and then I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to make sure that this is lined up along the top here. So you're going to have a little space right here. You don't have to use this tool to do this. You could just line up these holes and do it that way, but I want to show you that you can do it with a tool. So I'm going to make sure that this edge is flush here and that my V is in here properly. The V being in here properly is super important. So get that lined up, hold it in place, and then get your V down so that it's not going to go anywhere. And I am going to do each signature page separately. Um, just to make sure that I don't get any movement. If I were to stack them, I'm worried it may not measure up exactly perfectly. Okay, so again, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see. I've got this edge flush here, not, not here. You see the difference? Here, on this one. Okay, so I'm gonna use the exact same holes. So I've got and I, I'm just kind of pressing on this because this does work great, but because you want to make sure you're right in the middle of that fold, I'm going to press this down just to help it out a little bit more as I'm doing it. So I started on this first one that was circled. So I'm going to do one, skip one, two, skip one, three. And then I do the same thing down here. I'm starting on the one that's not circled. One, skip one, two, skip one, three. And these are going to measure up I got that awfully tight. These are going to measure up perfectly. Sometimes, if it gets stuck like this, I found that if I can pull this out, it'll loosen it, and that makes it a little bit easier to get the top to twist off. So there you can see you've got your punches. They're right in the center of that V-fold, and I'm going to take this over here, and you're going to see that they match up perfectly with the holes that we punched on the cover. Okay, so now I'm going to do... The same thing four more times. And I'll take you through it um, slowly again here one more time. So I'm gonna line my V up in the dip here. Then we're gonna make sure that the top of my page is lined up over here with the top of this sort of little bar area. I'm gonna take my V and I'm, I'm just holding this paper down so that it doesn't move. I wanna make sure that I've got that V where it's supposed to be. That's super important for this kind of binding. I'm going to hold that down tight, making sure, double checking, okay, again, making sure that I've got this paper lined up with this edge here. Okay. And again, I'm starting on the first circled one, one, skipping one, two, skipping one, three, and then down here, the first uncircled one, one, skipping one, two, skipping one, three. Okay. That top one is really tight for me for some reason. Okay. Again, we've got all our punches right down the middle and they are going to line up exactly with the one we just did, which lines up exactly with the holes that we have in our cover. Okay. So the directions in here for the Coptic stitch sewing, um, I think they're pretty similar to the way that I do it, but they're not super easy to understand. So I'm just going to show you how I do it. It works for me. The books hold together. Um, I, I'm sure there are a lot of different methods on how to do this, but the, the basics are pretty much the same of the looping and the tying in of the pages. So um, if, you're, if you have this and you're referring to this, what I'm doing might be slightly different, but it's going to get you the same results. Okay, so you can use a circle or a half circle needle for this if you want. I like to stay with my um, straight needle. I just I just prefer it, but I know a lot of people do like to use a curved needle just because it helps them do the loops a little bit better. So if you're having trouble with one, you know, try switch it to the other and see if that works a little better for you. So I'm going to start here. Um, and actually, I think I needed to trim one edge of one of these. This one is okay. It must be this one. Is it? I thought one of them needed trimmed. Oh, it's this side. Trim this down real quick here. Okay. 
So you want to make sure that you've got your front and your bottom lined up correctly. Where's my needle? Pop. Okay, so this is going to be my top. And then I want to make sure that I've got my pages lined up correctly. So I'm just going to sort of stick this like that there. And then, yes, I do. So I'm going to line it up like this. Again, just double checking, making sure everything lines up the way it's supposed to, and it looks good. So I'm going to start with my top cover and my very first signature page. Um, and actually, I'm going to flip it this way, so I'm going to flip this this way as well, just to keep myself um, huh, as organized as possible. Okay, yeah, I'm going to fold it this way and this way. So, I've got my cover facing down and my very first signature page. So, however many signatures you're going to do, that's going to be how much string you want. And you can, you don't have to really worry about covering the whole book because you can tie in more as you need it. So I'm just going to pull off, I'm going to start with one, two, three. Yeah, I'm going to do four times the length, probably plus a little bit more um, to get myself started. And then if I need to add in more, I will add in more. And I'll go ahead and thread my needle. You don't have too much to work with because then you could get frustrated by having to pull it through. So, and then I double mine up pretty much the whole way. Like I'll leave about that much at the end to work with that's not doubled. And you're gonna start off here with a knot. I do a double knot. Okay. So I'm sorry that this is going to be sort of white on white, but I'm going to hold this up and do my best to show you. I wish I had like a purple or, you know, something like that, that I could give you a contrasting color, but the white wax thread is all I have right now. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to start with the very first hole. You're going to go in through the center of that fold of your signature page and you're going to go in the very first hole. And you're going to pull that through and you're gonna let that knot catch, okay? And then, so there you're coming through. Then you're gonna loop around, just, just going over here, and you're gonna come in from the very first hole here, and you're just gonna pick up the cover page, okay? And then you're gonna pull that so that both edges are even. And actually, I wanna be on this side of the string like that. So your string should be crossing when it comes under like that. And then I'm going to loop around and this is where the curved needle comes in handy for some people. So you've got, all you've done now is you've come straight out, gone under and through, and then when you pulled your string, you're off to the left hand side of this strand here. You're gonna loop around going in between the signature and the cover, just like this. Pull that taut, not too tight, but taut. And then you're gonna take that needle and go right back inside the same hole that you came through originally in the center and just pull your needle through. And that's your first stitch. And you're just gonna continue that as you go. So let's do the next one. I'm gonna go in the second hole here and I'm gonna pull that through. And then I'm gonna come around and go in that hole on my cover and I'm holding it up here so you can see again this is where some people like a curved needle I, the straight one just works better for me so you're going to come in you're going to come on the left hand side of your string pull that through oops get that tight okay and you're going to go ahead and loop underneath right in between the signature and the cover and you'll pull that tight, not crazy tight, but tight. And then you're gonna go right back down that hole and pull your needle through. And there's your second stitch. And the cover is just gonna get tighter with each stitch that you do. So again, we'll do the third one going in. Pull that through. I'm gonna go down here and grab the cover, 
I'm going to bring that needle up over to the left hand side of my strand. Straighten that up a little bit. I'm going to loop through in between the signature and the cover. And then I'll go right back down that hole that I came up through. Now, you've done the three holes that are here, so you're going to just go ahead and move to the next one. Even though there's a large space there, you're just going to go ahead and move to the next one. And for this size book, this is plenty. You don't need more than three holes on each side. Okay, so now I'm going to have to move my needle a little bit because my tail is getting in the way. And we're just going to do the same thing again. So I've pulled that through the hole. I'm going to go ahead and grab my cover. Come up through over to the left hand side of that. Line that up. And I'll loop around in between my signature and my cover. And I'm going to go right back down the very same hole. Going down the next one. I'm going to go in the hole on my cover. Come up over to the left of that. Loop around in between the signature and the cover. And go right back down that same hole. For some reason, that is not as tight as I would like it to be. I'm just going to pull my stitch and tighten that up. Something happened there. Don't get frustrated if this happens. Just work with your thread and pull it until it gets as tight as you need it. it happens to the best of us. Okay, that looks better. Now I'm going to go into the last one here. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up my cover, staying over to the left here, pull that through. And here's where it's going to change, okay? So we're going to, just like, we're going to continue on, we're going to loop between the signature and the cover. Just make sure you pull in that one on the side there, that's the only trick there with the edge. And now, instead of going back through this hole, we now need to attach the next signature. So I'm going to take the next signature and lay that on top and I'm going to go in this top hole of the second signature. So I'm just going to go just like I would with the other one. I'm just pulling through here and that's going to attach this and we're not doing any other loops or knots or anything with that hole. It's, it's just to attach it here. I'm going to go next down through the second one and I'm going to continue the looping. So we don't have to pick up a cover here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and loop between the cover and the first signature. So you're always going in between the signature that you just did. You're always looping that one. No matter how many layers you do, you're always going right back through the loop that you did through the previous signature. So I'm going to go through here. So it happens to be the same one here because it's the... Um, cover and we just attach that but the next time it will be between these two and I'll, I will take you through that. So I'm going to loop down through here and then I'm going to go right back down. So it's always a little easier on the layers that don't have a cover because you're only really doing one loop. Again you just sort of make sure that it's nice and taut. I'm going to go down my third hole here, pull that up. And then I will loop down into the previous signature, pull that up, go back down, and now that third one's finished, so I'm going to hop down to the bottom part. Oops, got caught there. Pull that through. I'm going to make sure that's nice and tight. Yeah, I'm getting caught here. So just, just check in between each one if you're worried about that. You'll kind of feel it as you're doing it. 
And then again, I'm going to loop down through the signature here and go right back through that same hole. And I'll go down the next one. Come on. Okay. I think I'm good. I'm just going to double check. Yep. Again, I will loop down through in between that signature and go right back down the same hole. Can you guys imagine doing this like back in the old days when there were like a thousand of these signatures in a book? I can't imagine how much time it must have taken them. Down through this last hole here and now again we're gonna have to attach the next signature so we're gonna go through all the same steps I'm just gonna loop down through make sure that's attached and then the same thing just like we did the last time I'm gonna grab my next signature and instead of going back through the hole I came out of I'm going to go into the first hole on the next signature page okay sure that's lined up yep okay and now that's the only thing we do with that hole I'm gonna go through the second one now um, I'm gonna hold this up so this is where the, the difference is between your looping so now you're finally hitting that different row that you're gonna loop through so instead of going down and looping between these two like we did for the last two you're going to go in between the one that you just did. So you're going to go between the first and second signature page. So down between this one. I hope that that's focusing okay. So you're going to go ahead and loop through. Again, some people like to use the curved needle, but I've just found that um, I just have more control when I'm using a straight needle. So I'm going to loop down in between those two. Pull that through and then I will go ahead and go right back down the hole that I came up. I'm going to show you that again. Pull that tight. And then I don't like when mine loop around like that so if you pull yours up and it comes in that way I just you know go around and make it straight again. I'm going to go in this hole here. I'm going to try and do this while I'm holding it up, but it's it's a little difficult because I can't really see when it's up close to the camera. But, okay, let's let it focus. So I'm going to loop down in between the first and second signature. Okay. And I'll create my loop there. Pull that tight. And then go right back down in the same hole I came up. And pull that tight. And now I'm going up to the top. So I'm going to do that one more time. Um, I just want to make sure that you've got it. And you can always rewind if you miss something. I don't want to bore everybody. Um, okay, so again, I'm going to go through in between the first and second signature. Loop that through. And then go right back through that same hole that I started with. Okay, so now we're going to add the fifth signature and we're going to add the cover at the same time. So this is, I think, the trickiest part um, just because you're working with sort of three different layers instead of two. It's, it's the most complicated, but again, once you do it, you, you, you have the understanding of the looping and the working back. And I promise once you try it, it's not as hard as it looks. Okay, so I'm ready to add this fifth signature. So before, normally if, if I had more signatures, I would just go right in that hole here and that would attach it. But because I'm adding the cover, I'm going to go in the cover first. I'm going to pull that down. And again, since I'm working on the cover, I want to keep that off to the left. And then I'm going to go ahead and loop around here. And then I'm going to loop back down into my last previous signature here. And now I'm going to pick up the hole 
on the fifth signature page. So it's a little difficult to see, um, and I'm definitely not going to get it on camera, but I am going right down the very first hole on the fifth signature page, just like that. And now we've got our cover and our signature page, the start to getting those attached, okay? So now I'm going to do the second hole and come down. Just keeping everything taut as I'm working nice and straight. Give myself a little bit more. I'm going to pick up the cover. I'm going to loop around where the cover and the signature meet. I'm going to then do another loop down in between the previous two signatures. And I'll go right back in that second hole. And keeping it tight but not super taut but not super tight. We're attached all good. Down the third one. And I'm going to go ahead and loop in my cover. And then I'm going to loop around in between the cover and the signature page. Get those connected. Then I'm going to loop down between the previous signature to get connected to that. This one is always tricky for me for some reason. It's the angle of the book. myself out a little bit. It's always a little more difficult with the cover. Okay, so I've looped down and around, and now I'm going to go right back in that hole, the third hole. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. Okay. All right. So the bottom half of the cover is now attached. I go up and grab the fourth hole here. And I'll grab my cover, loop around, I'm gonna loop in between cover and that last signature. Did I seriously go through that? There we go. And then I'm going to loop down into the previous signature. And then I'm going to go right back in that hole. And pull through. And grab my cover. Loop around between my signature and my cover. Loop down into the previous signature. go right back through the same hole. Last one. I'm gonna go down through, grab my cover, go 
loop down through, grab the previous signature, and right back through that hole. Loop around and tie that into a knot. Nice and tight. And I'm going to do that one more time. Trim it off. And that will finish the Coptic Bound book. So now, you can see everything is nice and even. It's hand done, so nothing hand done is ever super perfect. It's not gonna look like a machine stitched it. Um, but you've got the pretty knots going along all of the signatures. I'm gonna take some glue and go around <laughs> and get my paper down so it's nice and, and it doesn't tear anything, but um, it's all lined up pretty even. I'm really happy with that. And you'll see that as you flip through, it's going to continue to lay flat no matter what page you're on. You're going to have a little gap between each signature page. That just depends on how tight your knots are when you pull everything through. So that is um, Coptic bookbinding using the We Are Memory Keepers uh, bookbinding tool. So I hope that was clear and you guys were able to see you know, what I was doing and explaining. If you have any questions, always just ask me below. I'll do my best to clarify anything um, that might be confusing. Um, and you should definitely give this a try. It's, it's some work, but it's a lot of fun and it's really nice to look at the finished product and know that you made it. All right, here are the three different binding techniques that we did. If you missed the first two, don't forget to uh, go ahead and check out the video that I posted prior to this one. I'm not sure if I'm going to post them same day or not, um, but it will be the one right before this one that I'll show you how to do uh, the stitching on these two here.